you know. That's... <laughs> oh. Dennis, oh. Dennis, welcome. Oh. Good evening, sir. Hello. Hello. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Seems to be a hour of happy. Yes, indeed. It's a good time of the day. For sure, for sure. You hear pounding outside the house here. It's because one of my workers is finally applying the new stucco onto the patched wall that I think I told you about. Yes, he did. The work I did in greater detail than you'd ever want. Yes. Don't agree with that. <laughs> Say, oh, no. No, oh, no, no please. Just, tell me Just the right amount. Of tell it. me about the, the texture on the stucco, Dennis. Well, it's funny you should ask. Yeah. So the viscosity of the material that we're applying has to be just right. If it's too soupy, it won't stick. If it's too dry, it'll crumble. Right. So we know the formula for the concrete to the lime to the sandy stone. Mm -hmm. You don't want to change that. But if you put in too much water, you can't take the water out. So you have to, right. in our case, cut the formula in half and go a half a bucket to half a bucket to two and a half buckets. Yes. So we keep the formula right. And the formula appears to be right. The viscosity may or may not be right, but he's in the back. Mm -hmm. Working with what I call the two exploratory patch places mm -hmm. to prepare for the one on the side of the house is very big and has to look good. Okay. So yeah, I have my only experience with that is in making pizza dough, and if it's a little bit too wet and you add add more flour, but if you add a little bit too much more too much flour, then you need to add more water, and you can get you can back you can ping pong back and forth on that until you have you know your whole kitchen is full of dough. Until you compromise the dough so much that it becomes a watery mess and you have to throw it away and start over exactly so you know and if it's too dry you can always address that but if it's too wet well you add more flour well yeah until at some point you i think maybe i can you do that forever yeah like i said until you fill up your kitchen uh, and you're just sort can, of swimming around in this dough blob uh-huh so <laughs> and help oh so, that happens to a lot of people doesn't it yeah so so make some some money. Plus, we can sell the dough to a local pizza parlor. Exactly. We advertise the dough. We advertise the water. We sell it to them cheap. We sell them too much water. Right. And then they run out of flour, and then they order more stuff from us, and then it becomes too much. And, of course, who do they call? The Dough Boys. We get in. Wait, we need, a better, we need a better name. Bop, bop. Uh, the, the Dough Busters. That hasn't been used. Mo Dough. Hmm. Modo. <laughs> Modo, ho. You give us the dough, and we sell you the dough. Wait, no. Uh, <laughs> let's trade doughs. There you go. Until I give you a female deer. And you then. Do a song. You could do a song. Dough. A deer, right? Dough, a disaster in your that kitchen. Would be our, that would be our, uh, our jingle. Our jingle, yes. So we could do some jingles. Hey, the Jingle Factory. Why, why don't we do some jingles for uh, this uh, podcast? For this podcast. Jingles. Clever little, uh, easy to remember. Yeah, it gets stuck in your head. Riffs. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Happy Menards. Happy Hour. Or... Ba, 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 Menards. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, blah, blah, blah. Yes. But when it gets into your head like that, then you're hooked. Well, one would hope that our that our dedicated uh, fan base, every time they hear the intro music, they just get excited for what we're about to bestow upon them. With our what is that? What is that intro music? It's just a little bluesy thing. Oh, is it? Okay. Hmm. I was thinking for a minute it was the the music we hear when we're calling on Skype, which is a pretty bouncy little tune. It is hard not to not to bounce your head around. Exactly. And you know that that beat is going to have to resolve itself into you know a bridge of some kind. And when it doesn't, that's when you're sick of hearing it. And you exactly. Pick up. Exactly. I don't answer right away because I want to hear it. That's that explains it. In fact, I'm going to hang up now. I'll call you back. <laughs> You jerk. Oh. 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 Be crass. Are you moving toward one of your violent moments? Well, don't push me. <laughs> that would be a yes. <laughs> Hi. 
I've got some f- f- more follow up on. Uh, remember how the the cat killed a mole and uh-huh. my wife dissected it. Well, the the following day, really, uh, we were asleep in the middle of the night, uh, and we heard this meow, meow, meow coming from outside our, our, our bedroom door. This is my wife and I in the guest room at my, my parents' house. And so she got up and she she went and said hi to the cat, say, well, what do you want? And uh, the cat had brought in a snake oh. That, oh. Was, that was not dead. Writhing. Still writhing. It was still writhing. Oh, my. Uh, the, the snake, kind? this was a 3.09 a.m. Oh, my. Because word. I looked at my watch as soon as we what got up. Seat. And so, <laughs> yeah, Thankfully, it didn't decide to bring it up into our bed and throw it on our face or something, you know? Can you imagine waking right. up at 3 in the here's morning a, with a, a, present. a fucking snake in your face? A bleeding. A bleeding um, snake. Yes. Pissed. Pissed and bleeding. Yeah, I would not. That would not be. I would not, I would not recover from that. Oh, my God. But uh, anyway, I was, the, I was able to... Uh, Go get the uh, broom and, and dustpan and get it in. Yeah, like if it was all it was all sort of curled up, but I think stretched out, it would have been at least two feet long. Yeah, uh, black snake, garter snake. Probably, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I can't ID snakes. Well, what, what color was it? It was black. It's probably garter snake. <laughs> Otherwise, called a garden snake. But. Right. No, I, I, just, I was just laughing because my options were black snake and, and garden snake, and you and then I said it was black, and you said, oh, it's probably a gardener snake. Right. See? <laughs> Power of deduction. Okay. You're not you're not dealing with some fool over here. I figured it out. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Elementary, uh, my dear. Yes. So that was exciting. Well at three, sounds, at three uh, in the morning. And were you were you we, geeked up afterwards so you couldn't go back to sleep or it was like no you went back to sleep? A little bit, yeah. Uh you know, so the I, power of the hunt. Right. Well, yeah, I don't know. I was sort of drowsy the whole time I was getting the snake hey, in the thing. And Hey, I'm telling you, man, we could sell this. You, from us, you get a cat with a half wild snake in its mouth for, yeah. your, for your friends. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. People paid for that. Pe- pe- people would pay to get a cat with a snake? Or, yeah. to, or, or the service to get rid of it? One than the other. <laughs> Just like we talked about last week. I mean, it's almost like yeah. old news how we, how, we, what are, how we transpired all these things, but this one would work. Do we, have, would... do we have a jingle for our cat snake service? Let's make one up. Go ahead. Yeah, Where's right. your guitar? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Feline. You wonder where the, you wonder where the monkey went. The cat, the cat, the cat has it. Not the monkey, though. But that's, that's what I thought of first. Imagine that. You thought of a monkey first? Yeah. Well. <laughs> that goes back to your childhood, I know. Something about a sneaky snake and a... Uh, and a kitty cat. Uh, pouncing. Uh, pouncing s- cat. Snake pouncers are us. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know. Crouching tiger. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... Crouching, crouching, crouching kitty cat. Writhing snake juice. Snake, snake pounce. dot com. Or, hmm. Say yeah, what's up, man? All right. So, tell me another story. <laughs> Thought about you the other day. Uh, it was yesterday, or no, it was Monday. And uh, I had gone to the, the local tavern here in Kalamazoo, the Old Dog Tavern, and there was Tom playing on the piano by himself from five till seven. Mm-hmm. With nary a soul in the house, five o'clock, four or five people at the bar, and a couple of people milling around outside. And I, he was playing the blues on his piano, and he was in no hurry. He would get a melody, and he would he twenty minutes later he'd still be playing some version right. of what he started. And sometimes it would riff into a picker, you know, a, a bouncy tune, and, right. and then you would hear him play a riff from an actual public song. And he either would or wouldn't actually play that song, and he would go. And I sat there for an hour and a half and drank beer and just enjoyed the hell out of it. And so afterwards, I said to him, oh, I just love what you did here. It's so relaxing and great. I play harp. You know, I'll, I'd like to come and play with you sometime. Mm-hmm. He said, well, I played with you before. I would love that. <laughs> so, yeah, come. As you can see, he said, I mean, you know, anything goes. So I missed a week, and then I went. Uh, got there pretty close on time. And uh, they started at 5. I got there about 5.20. 
and there again four or five people in the place i just pulled my harps out and he was playing a blues tune and i said what key and he said g mm -hmm. and i said got it and then blue and he liked it and four people there really liked it and we played together for two hours nice and it was so nice because in what i'm usually doing when i try to pick up a little uh facetime out there is i get two three tunes at most at a, a jam session or something like that so right to be able to just have two hours just to play music with tom it didn't matter anybody was there at all right but it was nice they were there and they were appreciative small group and they liked it and I, you know i think we, we played cool well enough to get that much appreciation but the owner was there and she was the most exuberant fan i spoke with her later i think her name is amy uh but it was so much fun and so one of the things that you'll identify with is that when he was playing a certain dedicated blues tune that hmm. may or may not have been a public song um i didn't know the words to whatever it might have been he certainly didn't we didn't know the name of anything he was just playing a bluesy tune that he knew or learned or whatever right so rather than do that i just made up the words and sang five songs about one woman or another who'd done me wrong <laughs> <laughs> or who yeah. i was pleading with because i'd done her wrong or both right and uh, like it, was, it was so much fun because there's just me and tom playing and it's like you and I just playing and yeah. doing that, just yeah. doing it for the fun of it. So it was very relaxing, and uh, as it turned out, it was uh, it was pretty good. Not too much stretching for the the rhyming word. And Tom would yell out "bridge." Mm -hmm. Not yell it out. I mean, he'd say yeah. right next to me. <laughs> just me and him. Bridge. So he'd say "bridge," and then he'd do the sixteen bar bridge. And so I'd immediately change the words to what I knew in parlance of mm -hmm. songwriting would be the chorus. Right. Right. Um, and uh, that that middle 16, as they call it, as we well know, makes or breaks a song. Without that, yes, you've just got a redundant, pleasant tune. With that, you've got something that's going to you've, you've got bounce. magic. Yes. yes. Nice. Do you uh, do you believe in magic? Do I believe in magic? I there are hmm to find magic. <laughs> oh, if you don't know, the answer's no. Okay. So you've already answered the question. Next question. You failed the test. Okay. You don't You don't believe it. Wait, I get another question, even though I failed the test? Yes. Okay. Ready? Ready? What's my next question? Do you believe in magic? I believe in deja vu. That's sort of magical. Uh, Feels like you just asked me this question. No, you're imagining it. Okay. Magic. I mean, there are things that can be, that can be magical, sure. Hmm. Seems like you're hedging a bit. Well, in fact, quite a bit. Do you believe in magic? Yeah, of course. I mean, well, I, I, I just, here, I just described something as magical. So, here's, well, that's not. That's, you know very well that's hedging the bet. That's why you said it. Okay. You're not. You're not complete without reason or logic, are you? I mean, you might be, and if you say you are, that's proof that in fact you are. If, so, if I say that I'm not, it's also proof. No, if you say you're not, it means you're out of touch because you really are. But you don't know it. That's even worse. Exactly. So exactly. That puts you like out of it to the second degree. Yes. You're out of it in the third degree. You're out into, into the other dimension where, you know, you're like, you know, wormholes and, and uh, you know, giant uh, snakes with cats dragging them in. And, that sounds magical. Oh, uh -huh. you'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> this is a glimpse into your psyche, these conversations. Well, I, one would hope that we are bearing both our psyches here well i try not to bear magic mine. monkey <laughs> but you you bear your soul the entire listening audience knows and has witnessed some of your violent tendencies for example yeah Where i am calm cool and good humored okay you, you seem to veer toward the toward the you know more aggressive right well maybe, maybe generational yeah i mean i just may be too tired to do it <laughs> But I think it's driven in large part by the fact that your shiny forehead hasn't changed at all since you sunburned it three episodes ago. So it looks like it's a permanent problem you have. You're beginning to look like a light bulb that was painted red so the bugs don't come by. Right. People well, can't see you, but but they'll have to believe me. I'm sure they do. Well, it's good for, for when I'm developing my film and things. The, I've, I have a red light to see what I'm doing by. Right, well... 
kind of old school, but I think I can follow you. And, and you're using like solution. And and all the cars stop when I went across the street, so. Well. And I mean, I don't even want to start with the prostitutes. Listen, if you put your hat off and on a lot, you constitute an emergency signal. Exactly. And and you know, not to mention all the all the prostitutes hanging around. Oh dear. Under my red light. Oh, jeez, oh, that came out wrong. <laughs> It did. It did. Well, I'm not going there. That's all the red light. Uh, but I think that the Morse code option would come into play. You could be very helpful. I could. The I Army could. would undoubtedly recruit you to stand on the most eastern or western point of our shore. Right. Stand there unless until there's trouble, and then take your hat off and on and shine a flashlight on it if it's at night because you're, you've got to figure out what a— What's the unit of light called? The, uh, a lumen? There's lumens and there's photons is another term, but yeah. A, l- a lumen. You got to yeah. figure out your lumen. I'm maybe five or six hundred when a bright light shines. Multiplier. There's a multiplier. So I ref- I reflect all the red all the red light. Is that what you're suggesting? I, I'm not. I'm I'm not sure what I'm suggesting. Well, people <laughs> rarely are. Are what? Are not sure what you're suggesting. <laughs> it's all about me. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. Your aggressive posture isn't helping in here. Help me. Well. Sorry. I'll lean back away from the mic. <laughs> People can't see that. You need to just tone it down. You're just very aggressive. You're a millennial living American millennial living in Europe, in Spain, nonetheless. And what are you drinking? Gin. Straight gin and ice. Wow. A bold man. I'm uh, doing the Alaskan Amber tonight. I found uh, two bars, three bars in town that sell Smittix, which is my favorite Irish ale. Yes, you mentioned so that I, last, last episode. I did. I did. By you, then it was only two, though. You, one. You Well, you had a problem because the guy wouldn't sell you uh, an opener oh. because you were a dick. No, no, no. That's what he thought. Uh, well, I really, well, maybe, well, maybe I am. You, you came around towards the end. You, you thought maybe I was kind of an ass when I said, "Oh, it's not spelled. Doesn't look like it's spelled Smithix, but uh, Smithwix." Yes. Well, that I, I was at a bar, same bar, two different waitresses in order to Smithix, and they said they didn't know what it was. And when I said it's spelled Smithwix, they said we had it, mm-hmm. but I didn't know it was pronounced that way. So. My mistake was misunderstanding that the difference between a young waitress who's not particularly beer savvy right. and a man who's made his living for the past 26 years selling beer and stocking beer, and I'm telling him how to pronounce Smithix. Well, so what if you what if you just ordered it as, as Smithwix everywhere and accepted the, the fact that people might laugh at you behind your back that you don't really know what it's really called? Why don't I say I'd like a Smithix, or as some would say, a Smithwick? Right. But as I would say correctly, I might add, the Smithix. That's, that's a little labor. That's laborious. good. It's definitely not laborious. the asshole move, for sure. Well, <laughs> well, and maybe it was a delivery, too, because I it, think I said to him, you do know. <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, you. Do you, like, knock, right. knock on his forehead and say, anybody All home right. in there? I have knocked on men's forehead. It usually doesn't uh, elicit a very favorable response, but I've always done it with an exit plan and a certain uh, understanding of my relative quickness. Yes. That uh, usually without uh, physical repercussion. But it does tend to get through a thick-headed son of a bitch mm-hmm. who's saying something that is so ridiculous that it, it demands attention, it demands accountability, it demands a response. The three taps on the center of the forehead has an amazing crystallizing effect on what's being said and the amount of energy that's going into the the moment. You you mean tap tap tap? You mean then after you do the taps on their forehead, they say, "Oh yes, I realize now that you were right." <laughs> or do they throw a punch oh, I, in there? I have to I have to laugh at your youth. 
You're so naive to think that. No, no, You no. said it was crystallizing, but you're no, crystallizing no, no, in, no. A, in a way that this is, this no, is no, no longer a verbal confrontation. Crystallizing like water on metal turns into thick and corrigible rust. Hmm. Does that sound positive to you? No. Well, I don't, I'm not sure anymore either. <laughs> so anyway... This week uh, in Spain, they're having one of the reasons that Spain appears on American television every so once a year is they're having the San Fermin festival where people the typical running of the bulls. Oh, that uh, that everyone when it's one of the few things that an American can say that they know about Spain is oh yeah that's where they run with the bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, that's all I knew when I moved there. I didn't realize that a running with the bulls is a common festival activity. Uh, it's not. It, it's at many locations. It's, yeah, it's not just there in Pamplona. Um, so, but, have you done it? <clears throat> no, I have been to the to the festival and I have watched the bulls run from behind the, the gate. But I was a little bit too mature i think you gotta be you gotta be kind of young young and dumb look fast well fast too it's they i don't think they're that fast and also it's this uh it's a little bit like a roller coaster it's the illusion of danger more than real danger however there is more real danger than there is on a roller coaster uh but because your probability of getting hurt by a bull in that situation is pretty low because they do a run every morning for a whole week, and they go years without anyone getting really seriously hurt. Uh, yeah. but you do get a bunch of bruises. I mean, there there are people that every every time that they do it, there's a whole bunch of bruises and uh, and stuff. But uh, yeah, it didn't. I'm o- I'm okay with my uh, with my ego and masculinity to be able to say that uh, no, I chose not to run with the bulls. I don't. That's what you think. That's what I think. Yeah, you need a dose of running with the bulls, my man. Yeah, to really your balls. Your put, balls need to be bigger. Put hair, hair, hair in my chest. They look yes. Your your balls look shrunken and your chest looks barren from here. And Whoa, I don't know. This video call I, is getting I, out of control. Here. I don't. I know that nobody can see you, and I wish that I couldn't. Right. But but I'm I'm thankful that you're keeping it mostly to a headshot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in the glimpses. Uh, that I don't relish in any way. Your balls need to be bigger, yeah. And you need, yeah, you need more more hair in your chest. So, you should consider. Now, I know how you feel about you is what's important. And you know what I say? Go, bro. I mean, <laughs> if you feel good, I feel good about you. But, uh, but you can. That's good. But your balls are tiny. But the truth of it is, it you shrunken balls, nearly hairless, and a chest that looks like uh, a baby's butt. Yes. Uh, which I've only seen in pictures. That's not true. But so there you have it. I'm trying to be trying to help you. Yeah. You're 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 young. You have got a shiny forehead. You need some help. Obviously. Again, the bull sees my red. For- the bull sees my red forehead, and I'm, crazy. In, I'm in trouble, right? So you can't run backwards. As you run forwards, if you're ahead of the crowd, you're a beacon of hope. Right. But if you turn around, you become a target. You become target number one. Yes. They would kill you. They would kill you. They would stomp all over you. And here's the fact is that because your balls are so small, it would kill you. If your balls were bigger, you barely even know it. <laughs> right. If you had hair in your chest, they might get lost in the forest of hair. But no, that won't happen. So you're you're the bulls would get lost in my forest of chest hair. Yeah. If it were thick enough. They would think I was just another bovine, or <laughs> um, I. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, uh, in, in, uh, an interesting thought, but I must say, it's a bit stray. Okay. No pun intended. But I think the answer is. You came into this world bovine, you will leave the world bovine. So that's just another observation that I'm surprised that we got to. But you asked, I'm telling you, yes, you appear to me to be bovine. Huh. So I was born a cow? No. No. Or a a, a calf? No. No? You were born bovine. It's 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 uh, It's a state of being. It's not 
It's not a. It's not. It's not uh, a forum. It's not a forum. Okay. You're. Uh, you're being too literal. Ah, uh, it's a. It's a mind. I, I have a. I have, I have a cow-like mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I meant, but I think it's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking more of the anima and animus. So there's the anima and the animus, and then there's the calmness. It's the bovinimus. It's the bovinus. The bovinus, and that is the uh, a way of being. Bovinus. That's neither male nor female, but is in fact. You know what? Here's the thing. A cow. Yes has a great deal in fair absolute bovinus <clears throat> and anybody else has less but still demonstrable and in your case it's easy to see this is why i know it, it's a spectrum when, i when see i know that you're this way because when we're walking around wherever there's a crowd of people you just go over to the crowd and try to mix in and you bump into them and stuff and right and and then when someone tries to speak to you when you're milling around like that you're, you 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 respond with kind of a low, huh. <laughs> yes, that's the, right. Sounds like me. And 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 you will stray out of that crowd, but then you go, as you as you as you well know, you go in your own direction, and that direction is not with the crowd. And so the crowd gets concerned, and then we you stray off. So you I, are. I don't I don't follow you, the herd. Yeah, you don't I mean, even hear them. But no, because, but, but no. Yes, but, but what? You're part of the herd, uh, but. Sometimes I stray from the herd. You're the worst part of the herd. You're on the uh, belly-sucking bottom of the herd <laughs> uh, chain of. Ah, uh, uh, right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not the, the alpha bull. No, I'm you the, stray, I'm the, you stray. I'm the omega bleat. cow. You stray, you bleat. You, 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 don't, you don't participate as you should. Your huh. bovinus is too is too uh, maverick. You're, you're, there's a there's a uh, my bovinus is too maverick. It's it's a it's a malady. Maverick bovinus. <laughs> I can't believe you don't know about this. You you, you espouse yourself as a young educated yeah. fuck. I don't know millennial yeah. whatever, and yet common <laughs> stuff. You don't know anything about it. It's like you've got no <laughs> doc got, doc. You're not, you're, Doc, I've, you're, I've got a maverick, got a maverick bovinus. Help me. <laughs> how, how do you spell bovinus? B o v i n u s. Okay. Next question. Oh. M a v e r i c k. Maverick bovinus. Hey, that's our motto. The show. Fit it in. Because you're the producer. Make it work. It sounds sort of like a. Uh, Sort of like a, a faux Latin phrase we could have at the bottom of our seal. Oh, I just thought the same thing. Happy but hour. It needs a, Maverick needs Bovinus. A, needs a third word. Uh, Maximus. Maximus. Maverick. Bovinus. Bovinus. And we end up with an, uh, with a, what do you call the initials? Not an acronym. Uh, yeah. An acronym, acronym would yeah. be at the initial. No, that's not true. MMB. Oh, is that an acronym? Yes. MMB? Yes. There. Yeah, MMB. So you work that into your branding, and then on the bottom, where you have the letters big, right? The title, the letters big, and then on the bottom, in a scrolly, Latin-y looking, it's right, right, right. Maximus Maverick Bovinus. <laughs> so I'll tell you a story. There's a guy that I uh, worked with uh, up in Alaska who worked for the Department of Corrections up there, and he, uh, this guy, name was was uh, his name was Phil. He loved hot sauce. He was the hot sauce king. Yep. And when we went out, all the restaurants that we frequented in Anchorage, which is not a very big town, they knew him because he always asked for the hottest hot sauce. Right. So I was in New Orleans, strolled into a hot sauce voodoo tent. Yeah. Where you had to sign a waiver to buy the variety that I bought. Holy shit. That they would not be held responsible for any overdose and hospitalization. And it was habanero uh, peppers. Yeah. And I took it back to the house, and I had uh, found it some other time. No, I, I, for this purpose, I went down to the antique shop, and I found a little box that was uh, big enough to hold a bottle of hot sauce, and mm-hmm. then a little. 
and I found a beautiful wooden box that had the initials on it of, um, I think it was M- MGP or something, but it was somebody's initials. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure out the Latin phrase <laughs> that that stood for Yeah. so that when I wrote him the note about the hot sauce, so what the Latin phrase meant in English that you learned when you opened it up and looked at the hot sauce was maximum burning hell. Nice. And and I can't, I'd have to look at the, the chain of uh, communications here for the, for the Latin version of that, but I looked it up and did it. Mm-hmm. So I packaged it up and I sent it to the Department of Corrections where he worked. And when I called him sometime later, he hadn't gotten it. Oh no. And then sometime later and he hadn't gotten it. And sometime later, and he had gotten it. In fact, he never got it because I think it was confiscated. Because when you deliver stuff to the Department of Corrections, duh, uh, they look at it. Yeah, and if potions. A, and right. a potion intelligent officer said, well, I wonder what that stands for. I don't think we should be delivering something to the to executive that, office of the to, Department of Corrections that says maximum, maximum burning, burning hell. hell. <laughs> Nice. So another another example of my overarching intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Well, that's too bad. I was hoping the story ended in. I don't Happy. Know. Well, so that that stuff is out there somewhere. What if it was uh, put away somewhere, and then in fifty years somebody finds it and says, "Whoa, what what is this?" Yeah. A wooden box with these initials, and you open it up. And, and they try it, and by then it's not like not quite really as potent. Hot. I would imagine. Right. Oh no! Oh no! Worse. Worse. It's been sealed, and 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 as a result, worse. Was there still a label on the bottle? Yeah. Okay. Would be okay. In this scenario. Okay. I was thinking, you know, you might like, <laughs> might like go and and bury it somewhere in Rome, and have someone discover it and be like, oh look, it's this Roman Roman hot sauce. Maximum uh-huh. burning hell, and then they could they could try it. Like there was a new there was a news article recently where uh, they found like the oldest. Well, there's there's two in the past year, I think. One where they found the oldest known wine that's like 2,500 years old or something. Uh, and the the researchers tried it and said, eh, not so good, <laughs> or whatever. And uh, another one where they recently found. Uh, the one, one of the oldest beers in in some abbey in Belgium uh, that had been in this in this bottle for you know six hundred years or something. Hmm. So one wonders. They, they didn't open that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't. I don't I recall. know how these guys could taste the wine. It seems like that would be a. Well, it was in a. I think it was in like a a sealed uh, clay pot or something, and I think. I, I don't recall exactly, but sometimes yeah. sometimes they they will find stuff in clay pots that are uh, in that, that are in ships that have sunk, and the liquid is still in the pots. They like it, they haven't broken or anything. So wow. there there have been discoveries of of old beverages. Cool. Hey, we could do that. Start to uh, bottle up stuff and, and then... leave it for two thousand years. Well, it's a little slow return. Um, yeah. No, I know. Uh, no, we'd sell it like we found it. There you go. Forgery. That's that's good. That's not forgery. Well, it... there could be some forgery involved, but and I'm not opposed to it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm describing, it's not forgery. It's I, false yeah. advertising. It's yeah. false advertising. I mean, all we're saying is that we found this. No, we're saying a lot more than that. We're saying it's ancient antique full of mind-numbing and miraculous liquid, is what we're saying. Ah, uh, okay. And we're just filling it fucking full of mad dog. I mean, there's only we've only got three listeners. It's not like they're going to buy it, so we don't have to worry about that. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Found it at the bottom of the ship. We create a little fake video, Mediterranean Sea. It's a truck. Off the coast of Spain. Hello. There you go. Hey, I Hello. live on the coast of Spain. Hello. This thing washed up in a bottle on the beach. That'd be easy. Easy to film. And it. And Instead it, of my idea of trying to get the shark cage one thousand feet out. Right. And and it clearly states on it, uh, 
600 BC. So. Well, they didn't know they were. <laughs> that was that was my joke. <laughs> we could write on it. And, and, see, and, see, 600 BC. We, now we know how old it is. That's that would say WDK, 600 WDK, uh, 600. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know how to date us. They were dated, were they? No. They had. They only knew, they only knew it was a new day. They had numbers. They probably even went on dates. I've got the best numbers anywhere. And they ate dates. That's for sure. Get to a current event. How about that uh, U.S. women's soccer team? Did you, oh, watch, did you watch any of that? Yes, I did. I what did. A, some, what a... some, some series ago, but I, I read a lot about it, more about it than seeing it. But it's thrilling, isn't it? We had we had a. Uh, it was an exciting match when uh, when they played against Spain in our house. Yeah. Uh, because. What was the score? Final score. Uh, when they played against Spain, I think it was like uh, I don't know, three to one or something like that. Uh, yeah. Look in the show notes for anyone listening that wants to see what the actual score was. But yeah, then the, in the final when they played uh, the Netherlands, that was pretty intense. I'm I'm so glad that they got another goal because I I hate winning uh, soccer matches on um, on penalty kicks. Like the first yeah. the first goal was a penalty kick, and that feels so cheap because well, it's, not, it's is that and, the right it's cheap. Well, I mean it isn't totally unearned, but this particular penalty. Had, uh, had, uh, had to go well uh, if it's a really serious penalty then you know too bad you committed the foul you you, you might this have was, this was chumps chump stuff well this was uh they had the the ref had to go and review the slow motion video from all these different uh, angles to decide it was yeah. it was borderline borderline uh and plus it's so much nicer to 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 score a goal that was you yeah. know everyone was on the field and and all the all the defense was there and you got by the defense and you scored the goal so they did it, and they did the second goal. Yeah, and then they, they won two zero, right? Two two nil. Yep. Yeah, as they say Wonderful. in England. I love that. I love that. Yeah, and apparently it was way more watched than anything the the U.S. men's team has ever done. Which uh, yeah, well, and in fact, the controversy over their pay is interesting in that the men's teams brought in one particular year. I don't know which your show notes can reflect this. Fifty million, and. Uh, that went down, and eventually the women's uh, raised forty-nine million, and so the idea of well, you know, the men's generate so much more profit. No, no. Well, it's not, not as if you need that reason really for equality, but it was it, it just wasn't true. Well, there's there's two sides to this that I see. If it were based on ticket sales and TV viewers, in general, men's soccer gets way more of that in general around the world all all things considered all yeah it, all yeah looking at men's uh, soccer versus women's soccer but in this particular case they weren't being paid by the ticket sales and uh, from fifa or whatever uh, apparently the the men's and women's teams are paid by the u.s soccer association which was getting all this extra money because the women's team was so popular and that's why it's such a, a dick move to pay them so much, so much less. Like, if you, you know, if our podcast is not as entertaining as another podcast that makes more money, it, we don't necessarily deserve equal pay. It, it's just that's like it's it's a matter of, of inter, I mean, sports is entertainment, right? That's where the money comes from. And if you can draw a large audience, then you should make you should make that money. Yeah. Yeah. So, them's my thoughts. There you have it. There you have it. And as you said what, earlier, what, what, could that be a catchphrase? Uh, do, we, do, we need, do we need a catchphrase? A note. There a you note about current events. Thank yeah. you for that. Thank you for that. That was our note about current events. Yes. Thank you. And now, something completely different. So, Dennis, there's a thing I want to run by you. Oh, well. <laughs> By all means, please, Eric, do so. When you're in the world of podcasting and monetizing podcasts, there is lately there's okay. One way to monetize a podcast is to have a Patreon page where someone can go and give us give us mon, uh, a monthly donation or a one time donation, saying, "Hey, thank you. I enjoyed. I was entertained by you." And 
I for sure I can tell you as a podcast consumer there are many podcasts that I enjoy that say hey we have a Patreon come give us come give us some money that I never get around to doing because it's you know I'm in the car I'm out for a walk or or I don't uh, I don't get around to actually making that donation even though they are worth five or ten dollars a month to me however there there's been a a new idea that's come along that has certainly worked on me and that is some podcasts will give you a normal free episode so you get a, a taste of what the of what the podcast is about and then there is a a bonus episode only for the people that have signed on to to pay and that seems kind of silly uh, at first but it it actually works like podcasts that have done that have seen huge jumps in their in their in their patreon donations and i can confirm that there's several podcasts that i listen to where when they went to that model i was happy to go pay to get a little bit more content mm. so just throwing that out there i'm explaining both to you and to our listeners that that's a thing that we might try and do right. now but all we talk about is really stupid stuff so would we have to be dumber I mean, what's the promise? We that, could be even dumber. We're, we're for even, even we, what's our motto? Dumb if, you want to, if you want us to be even stupider, <laughs> if you want to hear how we can be even stupider, then you get a bonus. Maximum and, Maverick Bovis. <laughs> Bovinus. Bovinus. Right. It rhymes with uh, genitalia. It rhymes with small penis, which is back to you and your hairless little balls. Right. But okay. Okay. We've already covered that subject. No pun intended. Covered it because, thank goodness, they're no longer out. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Uh, just a thing I wanted to mention in case we decide to do something like that. I don't know how we would do it. it so what would the goal be, that one of the two people listening would do that and we'd end up making 35 cents a month? In what? Is that your business plan? Yeah. I mean... We, yeah. we, we divide yeah. we divide it by that's, two. That's, that's seventeen yes. cents for you and seventeen for me, plus Patreon. Seventeen cents, 17 cents a month for a thousand years is seventeen hundred dollars. Sweet. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we could. <laughs> yeah. I'm, we could buy a. Uh, I'll be I'll be uh, one thousand sixty six years old. I mean, I should still be around then with the new stuff that they're figuring out. <laughs> Ten sixty six, man. One thousand one zero six six. That's not that old. That's a, that's a number that my history teacher drilled into me, because that was the year of the Battle of Hastings, I think, ah, yeah. where uh, William the First or somebody took power in England. And, and do you know what resulted from that? Mm, the, Hastings, the Michigan. Ma the Magna Carta was the result. That was the beginning of that peace agreement. Yeah. Check me on this. The the. The Maximus Bovinus. <laughs> and actually, it's funny you say that because a lot of people don't know this, but you can check this. That Magna Carta was originally called the Magna Carta Bovinus. Right. They, they shortened it. Because it was a big cow letter. Maybe Was it written on leather? No. It came from the fact that the manuscript that they wrote it on had been damaged when one of the founding fathers spilled their coffee on the instrument, and so it ended up looking like a spotted hide of a cow. And, ah, yeah. The founding fathers of England. Of oh, whoever. Okay. Oh, yeah, whatever we're talking. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Founding, well, what? You don't call the founding fathers of England founding fathers? What do you call them? I don't know that they have a term. They're just uh, your highness or whatever. I don't know. No. I mean, it, was that the founding of England? I mean, maybe. Well, who founded England? You need to do a little research, put it in the show notes, because I think it's worth knowing. Who, who founded England? What did they call them? The, Etc. cetera. The Druids? So if you're... If you're going to make 17 cents a month, you need to earn it. I know I'm earning my 17 cents. Yes, you, you are for sure. We should. This, this this beer costs more than 17 cents. Well, that's not profitable. No. 
I lose money every time we talk. <laughs> Reporting, time. Reporting at a loss. <laughs> well. An absolute loss. You're, you're often operating at a, at a loss. <laughs> well, yeah, you can make you can make fun of me if you want, but at the end of the day, it could be profitable enough that you're making 34 cents. Whoa. That's a 100% improvement on your income. If we doubled it, if we could just get that third listener. Yeah, well, well, and the third listener that actually is willing to cough up some money for this exquisite content. Yeah, why would anybody do that? I, it's beyond me. Your whole idea of a business model here totally escapes me. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't pay a fucking penny to listen to this. I, I would like be. I would like. Are you kidding me? This is just a couple of stupid guys drinking, talking. Why would I pay for that? I don't know. I mean, but I'm here. I mean, I'm I'm here. But we turn out new business models every single episode. We haven't acted on any of my ideas for making money, not a one. And you want to know why? Because you're a lazy son of a bitch. I bust my ass thinking this stuff up. I hand it over to you, and nothing ever happens. Huh. Nothing ever happens. You just go back to whatever you do right. in Spain when you're not doing this, which is probably much of nothing. Yeah. That's, you know, I mean, talking, I, talking I, Spanish to a couple of cows. bouncers that are... Cows. You probably do. I, I like to hang you, in the fields. You probably do. <laughs> I tell you, you are so Maximus Bovinus, Maverick, on your own, astray, astray. Well, hey, 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 hey. We could we could have a instead of a podcast, we have a cudcast <laughs> where we're just sitting around chewing cud. <laughs> you know what? A cut, a part of that I like. Cut, cut this past. is what, what we do. Each of us, before the podcast, yeah, go out in the lawn or wherever we are. In my case, I got lawn. I got weeds near me. I'm near a field. Mm -hmm. I'll go to the field, and I'll like what you'll do is we'll both grab a bunch of the straw or the grass or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and we'll slowly but surely before the podcast. Eat it, mm -hmm. chew it, but don't swallow it, but chew it up until we have, in fact, a cud that's about the size of a, um, let's see, the size, half the size of an egg. Got it. And it's all the grass and our saliva mixed in. Mm -hmm. we, That'll make for a good enunciation. We press, no, you're missing altogether. I'm not surprised. We push record, uh -huh. and all it is for an hour is each of us in turn chewing our cud. I chew a while, then you respond. You chew a while, and I respond for an hour. That will get us some patience. Yeah. It's like it's like white noise. The best kind of white noise. I got a title for the for the for the cud cast. Eric and Dennis chewing cud. <laughs> I think that's taken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Masticators? Mas a little more than that. You're in the right. You're in the right. Mastic you're in the right direction, but there's got to be more. Dennis and Eric masticating? Uh, mm. No, no. Cud, cud boys. Um, no. Sounds of mastication. There you go. You know that could be. We could. <laughs> I was gonna say we could. We could. <laughs> We could make money off that. <laughs> no, it's uh, a. Yeah. You know how? Yeah, the white noise that people like to go to sleep to. Ah. Uh, it could just be us just going. Oh man, that would sell. Perfect. As always, it's been a pleasure. All right, I'll see what I can salvage from this audio recording. And you know what? You need to put a little bit more work into this stuff. I expect some action on some of that uh, business stuff. If you've enjoyed what you just heard, you can support us by telling a friend or sharing us on social media. Monthly donations to help us pay for hosting and editing can be provided at patreon.com slash happy hour. That's all one word, happy hour. All our episodes, including show notes for each episode, are available on our website, happyhour.fm. 
You can tweet at us at happyhour.fm. That's with a dot spelled out. Happyhour.dotfm. Or we can receive email at the same name, happyhourdotfm at gmail.com. It would also be great if you could give us a positive rating on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. That really helps other people find us. See you next week.